Hello everyone, now let us discuss about pharmacology of prostaglandins and leukotrienes, which are together called as eicosanoids. First of all, coming to the term eicosanoids. Eicosanoids is derived from Greek, from the word eicosi, means 20. Eicosanoids, as the name indicates, are formed from precursor essential fatty acids that contain 20 carbons and 3, 4 or 5 double bonds. And when coming to the synthesis of eicosanoids, arachidonic acid is the most abundant precursor and it is derived from the dietary omega-6 fatty acids and also from linoleic acid or it is ingested directly as dietary constituent. Coming to the synthesis, in most cell types, arachidonic acid is a component of phospholipids and the intracellular concentrations of the free acid are low. Eicosanoids are not stored. One more important point regarding eicosanoids is they are not stored in the cells but are synthesized and released immediately. And the initial and the rate limiting step for the synthesis of eicosanoids is the liberation of arachidonate. And this is catalyzed by the enzyme phospholipase A, PLA. In that phospholipase A also, specifically cytosolic phospholipase A, CPLA, not only generates ar arachidonic acid, but also it generates lysoglyceryl phosphoryl choline, which is nothing but lyso-PAF, lyso platelet activating factor which is a precursor for platelet activating factor. We will discuss in detail about platelet activating factor in our next session. As of now, the PLA, cytosolic PLA generates arachidonic acid and lyso-PAF. Here you can see the schematic representation. Arachidonate, it is derived from the phospholipids. Phospholipids by the action of phospholipase A. Phospholipase A, they produce arachidonate and lysoglyceryl phosphoryl choline, which is nothing but lysoplatelet activating factor. And this is the precursor for the synthesis of platelet activating factor. And activation, phospholipid is converted to arachidonate by the activation of phospholipase A. And PLA is activated by PLA2 specifically. PLA2 is activated by phosphorylation and this may be triggered by signal transduction systems that are activated by many stimuli such as thrombin action on platelets, C5A on neutrophils, bradykinin on fibroblasts, antigen antibody reactions on mast cells, and general self damage. All these are the triggering factors for the activation of PLA. And the drugs glucocortinoids, they induce and release NXN1, which down regulates PLA activity and thereby limits the arachidonate release. Glucocorticoids, they down regulate phospholipase A thereby limit the release of arachidonic acid. Whereas the activation is, whereas PLA2 is activated by these following steps and it is inhibited by glucocorticoids. Now, once the arachidonate is formed from the phospholipid, it undergoes metabolism to form various products. And the metabolism of arachidonate is mainly governed by two enzymes. The first one is fatty acid cyclooxygenase or simply COX, COX. It has two main isoforms, COX-1 and COX-2. This COX, these, uh, it, the main action of COX is it enzymatically combines arachidonic substrate with molecular oxygen to form unstable intermediates called cyclic endoperoxidases, which subsequently get transformed by other enzymes to different prostaglandins. So, COX, they are mainly involved in the production of prostaglandins. Whereas lipooxygenases, they work sequentially to synthesize leukotrienes, lipoxins and other compounds.
Now here you can see the action of fatty acid cyclooxygenase. We can see for, uh, arachidonase is produced from phospholipid, phospholipid by the action of PLA2. After the production of arachidonic acid by the action of cyclooxygenases, arachidonic by the action of cyclooxygenases is converted to cyclic endoperoxidases. These are unstable compounds. Cyclic endoperoxidases, they form various compounds such as PGI2. First, PGI2, it is a prostaglandin I2. It is a vasodilator, hyperallergic. Uh, hyper it stops platelet aggregation. PGI2 is a vasodilator. It is hyperallergic and it stops the platelet aggregation. The next is thromboxane A2, TXA2. This is thrombo thrombotic and it is a vasoconstrictor. And similarly, PGF2 alpha. This is a prostaglandin F2 alpha. It is bronchoconstrictor and myometrial contractor. Next is PGD2. It inhibits platelet aggregation and it is a vasodilator. Next is PGE2. It is a vasodilator and hyperalgesic. So these are the various prostaglandin products that are produced by COX. And as we have discussed earlier, cyclooxygenase, the glucocorticoids, they also inhibit the induction of COX, thereby prevent the production of prostaglandins. Next is NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They also inhibit this COX enzyme thereby prevent the production of prostaglandins. And similarly, TXA2 synthase inhibitors, they inhibit the production of TXA2, thereby prevent thrombotic action and vasoconstrictor action. And at this step, at this step, TXA2 synthase inhibitors, they prevent the synthesis of TXA2, whereas TXA2 antagonists, they prevent the action of TXA2. And similarly, prostaglandin antagonists, they antagonize the actions of all these things, PGI2, PGF2-alpha, PGD2 and PGE2. These are the various sites of action for drugs and the metabolism products of arachidonate by the action of COX. Now coming to the action of lipooxygenases on the arachidonate. By the action of 12 lipooxygenase, arachidonate, when it acts with 12 lipooxygenase, it produces 12 HETP, which is a chemotaxin. Whereas arachidonate, by the action of 15 lipooxygenase, it produces lipoxin A and B. And arachidonate, by the action of 5 lipooxygenase, it produces 5 HPET. E, which is nothing but 5 hydroxyl peroxy eicosa tetraenoic acid. And this 5 HPET it gets transformed to LTA4. LTA4, which in turn produces leukotrienes LTC4, LTD4, and LTE4. All these things are bronchoconstrictors and they increase the vascular permeability. Leukotriene C4, D4, E4 are bronchoconstrictors and they increase the vascular permeability. And LTB4 is a chemotax. And leukotriene receptor antagonist, for example, Zephyrlucast and Montelukast, they prevent the bronchoconstriction by act, preventing the action of LTC4, D4 and E4. And similarly, lipooxygenase inhibitors, for example, zelutin, it prevents 5 lipooxygenase and prevents the formation of 5 HPTET, which in turn prevent, is responsible for the formation of leukotrienes. So these are the various metabolic products of arachidonate by the action of lipooxygenases.
Now coming to the receptors of prostaglandins, there are mainly five types of prostaglandin receptors and all are G protein coupled receptors. Depending upon the ligand they act, they are uh, categorized into DP, FP, IP, EP and TP. For DP the ligand is prostaglandin G and for FP the ligand is prostaglandin F. And for IP, the ligand is prostaglandin I. And for EP, the ligand is prostaglandin E. And for TP, the ligand is thromboxane A. <laughs> now coming to leukotrienes. Leukotriene, leuco, they are called leukotrienes, leuco because they are made by white cells and trienes because they contain conjugated triene system of double bonds. There are mainly two types of leukotrienes. Chemoattractant leukotrienes and cystinyl leukotrienes. Chemo, example of chemoattractant leukotriene is LTB4. This is a chemotaxin. Whereas cystinyl, which are nothing but sulfidopeptide leukotrienes, they are LTC4, D4, E4, and F4. Now coming to the action, the chemoattractant LTB4, it causes adherence, chemotaxis, activation of polymorphs and monocytes and stimulates the proliferation and cytokine production from macrophages and lymphocytes. Coming to the action of cystinyl leukotrienes, which are LTC4, D4, E4 and F4, they lead to contraction of bronchial muscle, vasodilation in most muscles, but coronary vasoconstriction. These are the actions of cystinyl leukotrienes. Coming to the in detail actions of leukotrienes, the cystinyl leukotrienes have important action for the respiratory and cardiovascular system and the cystinyl leukotriene receptors antagonists are used in the treatment of asthma often in conjugation with a corticosteroid. Coming to the effects of leukotrienes on respiratory system, the cystinyl leukotrienes are potent spasmogens and bronchoconstrictors. LTE4 is less potent than LTC4 and D4, but its effect is much longer lasting. And all of them, they cause increase in the mucus secretion. Coming to the effects on cardiovascular system, small amounts of LTC4 and D4, if given intravenously, they cause rapid short-lived fall in BP and significant constriction of small coronary resistance vessels. And when given subcutaneously, they cause wheel and flare. When given tropically, LTD4 in nose, it increases nasal blood flow and lo local vascular permeability. Coming to the role of leukotrienes in inflammation, LTB4 is a potent chemotaxic agent for neutrophils and macrophages. It upregulates the membrane adhesion molecule expression in the neutrophil and increases the production of superoxide anions and release of granular enzymes. It is a potent chemotaxic and it upregulates membrane adhesion molecule expression in neutrophils and also increases the production of superoxide anions and the release of granular enzymes. And the effect of LTB4 on macrophages and lymphocytes is it stimulates proliferation and cytokine release. And like PGE2 and I2, LTB4 also sensitizes afferents carrying pain impulses. This contributes to the pain and the tenderness of inflammation. Coming to the prostaglandin and glucotrin receptor classification based upon their physiological action. So, in detail, we will discuss about the mechanism of action of each receptor. The first one is IP. Physiological ligands for IP receptor are PGI2 is greater than PGG2. Coming to the distribution, IP receptors are abundant in cardiovascular system, platelet and neurons and elsewhere. Coming to the general physiological effects, generally they are inhibitory. Examples, smooth muscle relaxation, anti-inflammatory and anti-aggressive effects are seen. They are GS type of G-protein coupled receptors and they increase the levels of cyclic AMP. The next one is DP1. Here, the ligand is prostaglandin D2. It has greater affinity when compared to prostaglandin E2. 
distribution they are low in abundance they are found in vascular smooth muscle platelets cns airways and i and next is ep2 ligand is gpe2 it has greater affinity when compared to gpf2 alpha they have a widespread distribution and action is generally inhibitory this action is same for all these four receptors ep4 the ligand is prostaglandin e2 is greater than prostaglandin 2f alpha this is also has a widespread distribution so in general ip dp1 ep2 and ep4 all are generally inhibitory and they cause smooth muscle relaxation anti inflammatory and anti aggregatory effect the next receptor is tp fp and ep1 they are generally excitatory example they cause smooth muscle contraction pro inflammatory and platelet aggregatory actions all are gq by gi uh, g11 g protein coupled receptors they cause upregulation of plc and increase the calcium ion concentration coming to the distribution of tp here the physiological ligands are thromboxin a2 they are equal to h2 and g2 prostaglandin h2 and d2 coming to the distribution they are abundant in cardiovascular system platelets and immune cells two subtypes are known with opposing actions next is fp receptors here the ligand is prostaglandin f 2 alpha it has greater affinity than prostaglandin d2 they are very high expression they have very high expression in female reproductive organs next is ep1 receptors here the ligand is prostaglandin e2 has greater affinity than prostaglandin f2 alpha uh, distribution they are found in myometrium intestine and lung the next receptor is ep3 and dp2 they are also generally inhibitory they are g i by g o g protein coupled receptors and they decrease the concentration of cyclic amp the physiological effects are smooth muscle relaxation anti inflammatory and anti aggregatory effect the ligand for ep3 is prostaglandin e2 it has greater affinity than prostaglandin f2 alpha this coming to the distribution they have widespread distribution throughout body mainly isoforms different g protein coupling next is dp2 here the ligand is prostaglandin d2 has greater affinity then prostaglandin f2 alpha coming to the distribution they have different structure to other prostaglandin receptors they are widely distributed especially in the immune cells the next type is blt1 these are leukotriene receptors ligand is ltb4 it has greater affinity than 20 hydroxy ltb4 distribution they are widely distributed in leukocytes and in some endothelial cells physiological effects are they have high affinity for ltb4 receptors activates leukocytes and stimulates chemotaxis they are gi by go receptors they decrease the cyclic amp and in some cases they act as gq by gi receptors and increase plc pathway the next is bl2 receptors here also ltb4 is the ligand several tissues coming to the distributions they are distributed in several tissues intestine skin and some lesions they have low affinity for ltb4 receptor may be important in gi barrier formation and airway inflammation they are gi by go receptors and they decrease the cyclic amp the next is cyst cystinyl uh, lt1 receptors the affinity for ligands is greater for ltd4 followed by ltc4 and finally ltd4 they are distributed in several tissues including leukocytes mast cells lung intestine and vascular tissue 
they cause bronchoconstriction and leukocyte activation they are gq by g11 receptors and they decrease uh, increase the plc pathway finally coming to cyst nt2 receptors uh, the ligands are nt c4 higher, has higher affinity followed by nt d4 and nt e4 coming to the distribution they have distributed in several tissues including leukocytes mast cells nasal mucosa and vascular tissue coming to the physiological effects of cyst lt2 receptors they activate pnm they cause pnm activation inflammation contraction contract some vascular smooth muscle they are gq by g11 g protein coupled receptors and they upregulate the plc pathway coming to the actions of prostaglandins prostacyclins and thrombopsins physiological actions previously we have discussed about the receptors now let us discuss the overall physiological actions on various body systems first coming to the effect on blood vessels prostaglandin e2 causes vasodilation and decrease in bp prostaglandin f2 alpha it causes vasodilation mostly but larger veins constrict it has little effect on bp prostaglandin i2 it causes vasodilation and marked and widespread decrease in the ppc coming to thromboxane a2 it causes vasoconstriction now coming to effect on heart prostaglandin e2 is weak inotropic and it causes reflex cardiac stimulation similarly prostaglandin f2 alpha is also weak inotropic i2 and a2 they don't have any effect coming to the effect on platelets pg e2 cause variable effect whereas pg i2 causes anti aggregatory effect and thromboxane also causes thromboxane causes aggregation and release reaction thromboxane e2 causes aggregation and release reaction coming to the effect on uterus pg e2 contracts and relaxes non gravidal human uterus in vitro it also causes softening of cervix and pg f2 alpha it causes contraction in vivo and in vitro and this this also causes softening of cervix coming to the effect on bronchi pg e2 causes dilation inhibits histamine release pg f2 alpha causes contraction con constriction pg i2 causes dilation and inhibits the histamine release whereas thromboxane a2 causes constriction coming to the effect on stomach pg e2 decreases acid secretion and increases mucus production similarly prostaglandin i2 also decreases acid secretion and causes mucosal dilation coming to the effect on intestine pg e2 contracts and longitudinally relaxes circular muscles it increases peristalsis increases calcium ion con uh, chloride ion concentration and water secretion coming to the effects of pg f2 alpha it is spasmogenic fluid it in and increases fluid and electrolyte secretion coming to the prostaglandin i2 it is weak spasmogenic inhibits toxin induced fluid secretion similarly thromboxane a2 is also weak spasmogenic coming to the effect on kidney it causes natriuresis decreases the chloride ion concentration causes reabsorption inhibits adh action causes vasodilation and then uh, inhibits adh action vasodilation and renin release coming to prostaglandin g2 it causes natriuresis causes vasodilation and renin release coming to thromboxane a2 it causes vasoconstriction of renal blood vessels coming to the effects on cns pg e2 it is pyrogenic and causes variety of effects on icv injections coming to the effect on efferent nerves pg e2 and pg i2 both of them they sensitize to noxious stimuli tenderness coming to the effect on endocrine pg e2 releases anti pituitary hormone steroids and insulin it has 
thyroid stimulating hormone like action coming to pgf2 alpha it releases gonadotrophins prolactin and luco luteolysis in animals next to the effect of metabolism coming to the effect on metabolism prostaglandin e2 is anti anti lipolytic it has insulin like action and mobilization of bone calcium is seen coming to the classification pharmacological classification of prostaglandins they are natural prostaglandins and the prostaglandin analogs coming to the examples of natural prostaglandins drugs are gemiprost dinoprostone which is nothing but pge2 dinoprost which is nothing but pgf2 alpha alprostadel which is nothing but pge1 prostacyclin which is nothing but pgi2 it is also called as ecoprostinol these are the examples of natural natural prostaglandins the next is prostaglandin analogs the first one is carboprost which is nothing but 15 methyl pgf2 alpha next is misoprostol which is nothing but methyl pge1 ester next is lant latinoprost which is nothing but pge2 analog next is trevoprost and bimetoprost these are the examples of prostaglandin analogs coming to the uses the first use is in abortion intravaginal pge2 pessary inserted 3 hours before attempted dilation can minimize the trauma to cervix by reducing the resistance to dilation intravaginal misoprostol is now favored by many in the place of oral because it produces fewer side effects before administering this ectopic pregnancy should be ruled out before hand and complete expulsion should be confirmed afterwards whenever we use these drugs uterine cramps vaginal bleeding nausea vomiting and diarrhea some of the possible complications methotrexate whenever it is administered along with misoprostol it is highly successful in inducing abortion in the first weeks of pregnancy and prostaglandins they convert oxytocin resistant midterm uterus to oxytocin responsive one and a single extra amniotic injection of pge2 followed by iv infusion of oxytocin or intra amniotic pgf2 alpha with hypotonic solution it produces second trimester abortion in a high percentage without undue side effects and pre treatment with mefepristone improves the efficacy of prostaglandin e2 as abortive agent these are some of the actions or effects of prostaglandins in abortion next is induction and augmentation of labor pge2 and pgf2 alpha now it is rarely used have been used in the place of oxytocin in toxemic and renal failure patients because they do not cause fluid retention intravaginal route is most preferred and extra and intra amniotic route is also infrequently used coming to the use as cervical priming intravaginal application of prostaglandins makes cervix cervix soft and compliant and if needed labor may be induced 12 hours later with oxytocin chances of failure are reduced by use of prostaglandins for cervical priming next is in the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage carboprost carboprost which is nothing but 15 methyl pgf2 alpha injected intramuscularly is an alternative for control of postpartum hemorrhage due to uterine atony especially in patients who are unresponsive to ergometrin or and oxytocin coming to the next drug a uh, next use is peptic alpha stable analog of pge1 which is nothing but misoprost is occasionally used for healing peptic ulcer especially in patients who need continuous anti 
NSAID therapy or who continue to smoke. Coming to the next use in glaucoma, topical topical PG F2 alpha analogs like latinoprost and isopropyl unoprostone are ones are one of the first choice of drugs in wide angle glaucoma. And next use is to maintain patency of ductus arteriosus in neonates with congenital heart defects till surgery is under, undertaken PGE1 which is nothing but alprostatil it is used to maintain patency of ductus arteriosus. Opnea can occur in few cases as a side effect. And next use is to avoid platelet damage. PGE1 that is epoprostinol can be used to prevent platelet aggregation and damage during the hemodialysis or cardiopulmonary bypass. It also improves the harvest of platelets for transfusion. And few cases of primary pulmonary hypertension have been successfully maintained on epoprostinol infusion. Coming to the use in peripheral vascular diseases, PGI2 or PGE1 infused intravenously can relieve pain and promote ulcer healing in several cases of intermittent glorification and in Reynolds disease. Next is use in impotence. Alprostatil, which is nothing but PGE1, injected into penis causes erection lasting up to 1 to 2 hours. However, Oral sildenafil and tadalafil are now preferred for erectile dysfunction. Coming to the side effects of prostaglandins, they are nausea, vomiting, watery diarrhea, uterine cramps, unduly forceful, forceful uterine contraction, vaginal bleeding, flushing, shivering, fever and malleus, fall in BP, tachycardia and chest pain. These are some of the side effects of prostaglandins. By this, we complete prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on pharmacology and other related pharmaceutical sciences.